In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this easy to use, easy to interpret variance report with data visualization and drill down capability from the raw data. And you know what? It's way easier than you think. I'm going to walk you through step by step changing this raw data like this into this stunning pivot report. Before we even get going on this process, I just want to mention a couple of things about the data structure here. You'll see that we have year and month as separate columns. And also we have, you know, a product category and a subcategory column and then a the sales and budget and everything's in columns. What we don't have, for example, is multiple columns of numbers for like, you know, one for each month or actuals and sales on different rows and stuff. So this is the kind of data structure that Excel loves to deal with. If your data is not in this kind of structure, you can unpivot data in Power Query, which will turn like columns into rows essentially, and you can combine tables together. First of all, we're going to add this to the data model. Now, don't worry if you don't know what the data model is. I'm going to talk you through it. It's a pretty straightforward concept. We're going to need the power pivot ribbon command. And if you don't have that, you can get it on the developer menu and hit com add-ins and it's here you just to make sure that box is ticked you actually might not have the developer one either and the way that you can get that quickly is click on your quick access ribbon toolbar and go to more commands and then in customize the ribbon tick developer and on power pivot menu we're just going to be as long as we're in our data somewhere we can hit this add to the data model and what it'll want to do is turn it into an excel table if it's not already now i purposely left mine not as a table so that you could see this happening it says it's got headers and then you hit okay and you're going to end up in something that looks like this you got a new window open it looks a little bit like excel but it's going to behave in a very different kind of way so our data is now in something called the data model which means that power pivot can access this data and manipulate it into pivot reports and pivot charts and the like. Now we've got our data in the data model, we want to start doing some calculations with it. So the very first calculation that I want to do is get some totals in there. So we want the total sales and the total budget. Luckily, if we click in this calculation area, which as long as you've got this button clicked, you can see it there. And we can move this up and down, by the way. Click on auto sum and it will create a formula in the formula bar here that is the sum of actual sales. Now that's pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna call that rather than sum of actual sales, I'm gonna call it total actual. Although this looks like standard Excel formula language, it's actually something called DAX, which is data analysis expressions language. And it's very, very similar. So you can pretty much give it a stab at typing any kind of Excel formula you want and it might understand it. And I'll hit enter on there and we've got our total actual, which is the sum of actual sales. Now, actually, what we want to do is put some formatting on that because by default, it would have just put general formatting on. So we click on the formats and say more formats and we'll give it a number. And I'm going to say no decimal places, but use a thousand separator on that. One of the really annoying things about normal pivot tables is when you drag like a sales value, for example, like this into a pivot table, it will give it the format like essentially that you see here, like no formatting and you have to manually format it every time. Whereas the great thing about now this total actual that we've got is that when we drag that into a pivot table, it will pick whatever format we set on here. And now we're going to do exactly the same on budget. But what we can do is we can copy and paste that there. And it doesn't actually matter where we put these measures. Um, they don't have to go in the columns they relate to, for example. And I'm going to rename this total budget. And obviously this needs to be the sum of budget sales. So if I hit the letter B and hit tab, it will convert to budget sales. And the great thing, the reason I did that copy and paste rather than use another auto sum is because all of those formats are carried along with it when you copy and paste. Now we have our two initial measures for total actual and total budget. And because we now have these as measures, we're actually going to hide these two columns here so that it will force users of pivot tables, primarily ourselves, I'm guessing, to use the new measures that have been set up rather than the unformatted kind of actual sales column and budget sales column. So we'll go ahead and do that. So all we do is highlight that, we right click and we put hide from client tools. So that hides that one 
and we do the same with that one, hide from client tools, and it just grays it out there. So we've done the first three parts of our creation process here already. So we're just onto the last one now where we're gonna add some calculations, i.e. the variance and the variance percentage. Now you could have put these in the table and summed them in the same kind of way, but you can't do that when you think about it with a percentage because it needs to be in the context of whatever filters are being applied to the data. For example, on our final report here, these percentage values relate to the subcategories here, but we need the total for furniture to apply to the totals. And if we just had a sum of these values here, obviously it would just be completely rubbish. It wouldn't make any sense. So that's why I'm gonna do these calculations inside the data model rather than on the main data table. Okay, how do you go about doing this? We're gonna create a measure. We'll click on the power pivot ribbon, measures, new measure. And the first question is, which table are we gonna put it in? We've only got one, so that's simple. But if we have more than one, I would suggest that you just put them all in the table that seems most relevant, but certainly one that's got like the values that you're dealing with it. The measure name, we'll just call it variance, and you could give it a description, but we're not going to. And this is where the beauty of Power Pivot kicks in, because we can use measures we previously created within calculations. So they all like build upon one another. So we created one called Total Actual and another one called Total Budget. The variance is just gonna be the difference between the two. So as we start typing, we see that they appear in the list and you can just hit tab to pick them up. So Total Actual minus Total Budget, and that's it basically. We can check that formula. Of course, there's no errors. It's incredibly simple. It's one measure minus another. And we can give it a number format, which I will. I'll say it's a decimal number with no decimal places again, and use the thousand separator. Okay, so we now have a measure called variance. Now we're gonna create a measure for the variance percentage. Now this is where things start to diverge from standard pivot tables because a variance percentage would be very hard to calculate in a pivot table at summary levels. And quite often people resort to like doing calculations at the side of a pivot table, which is most unsatisfactory because as the pivot table changes shape and size, the calculations don't work and things like that. So we're gonna create a new measure for the variance percentage. Again, in table one, let's this time call it variance percentage. Now we could just make this the variance uh, divided by the total budget, and that would work. But it could come out with an error if we had things like zero budget, for example, so divide by zero errors. So instead of doing that, we're gonna use the divide function, and this allows us to determine what will happen if there's an error kind of think of it as a bit like an if error function in the grid of Excel. So divide our numerator, which is going to be our variance. There's our variance and our denominator, which is going to be the total budget. And then what do we want it to do if there's an error? Well, I'm gonna say that we actually want it to be blank. I'm gonna type the word blank, hit tab, and that'll come up. It's actually a function itself. It'll give you a blank result. You might say, well, I want it to be zero, which you could, or like not applicable in text. It doesn't really matter, but this time we want it to format it as a percentage. So I'm gonna say a percentage, and I'm gonna have no decimal places on the percentage. Should it go over a thousand, which we hope not, I'll use the thousand separator. So we have all our calculations set up in the data model. We can't really see them at the moment. So now let's go and move on and create a pivot table with those measures in it. Okay, let's get to producing this fantastic looking pivot report then. So all our data is in the data model. So we just go to insert pivot table from data model. And ask us where we want to put it. I'm just going to put it here so that I can remember the steps that I'm taking to create it. What it'll do is it'll pull up a list here of all the tables in your spreadsheet at the moment. Now, table one, remember the very badly named table that we put into the data model. And then there's any other tables you've got in your spreadsheet. But table one, that's the one we want. We can see here that we've got these measures that we created. And when you drop these in as values, you can see that they're being formatted exactly how we wanted. So percentages, etc. no messing about like you do on standard pivot tables to get the number formats right. 
Anyhow, what are we going to produce? Right, so we're going to have a row for product category and then we're going to subtotal that. And then we're just going to put in our values and we can just, because they're values, we can just tick them and they'll come straight in as you can see. So this is our very, very basic looking pivot table already. What we now need to do is just make that look a bit tidier. So if we go to the design menu, we can pick from a variety of styles. I'm going to pick one that's got lines on it. So if I switch the grid lines off for a minute, go to view and switch the grid lines off, we can see which ones of these styles here is putting grid lines on. I also want to go to subtotals and I'm going to put subtotals at the bottom of the groups. And I'm also going to insert some blank lines so that we've got a gap in between each one. I'm then just going to remove the field headers as well, which are on the Analyze tab. So I think we've got something that's looking reasonable now. The next step is to add the visualization. So in other words, the data bars and the graphics. So what we're going to do is add additional columns for the variance. So if we drag variance in again here, so we end up with something called variance 2 on screen. And then we're now going to manipulate that essentially to change it into our data bars. So the first thing is if we click on the first row and just make sure there's no filters on the pivot table before you do this, by the way. And we're going to go to the home menu, conditional formatting, data bar. And we're going to pick this middle one here, which is a green data bar. And then you'll see when you put that on, you get a little icon here for formatting options. And if you don't get that, don't worry, because you can just go into manage rules here. But given that we've got that, we'll click on there and we'll say we want to show this for all values for variance two and product subcategories. Now, if we click that one, we'll get it on the totals as well. But what we want to do is click that one and then it'll exclude it from the subtotals so that they don't distort the data bars. We're part of the way there now, but it's still a bit of a mess. So we just want to format those data bars now. So if we go to manage rules, conditional formatting, and there's a couple of things we want to change. So we click on edit rule for a start. And the first thing that we're going to do is show data bar only so that we don't have the numbers behind because we've already got the numbers in the column next to it. And then for minimum and maximum, I like to use percentile, which just sort of takes the edge off any kind of extreme values. I mean, you could change 10 and 90 if you think you've got outliers in the sort of 20, 80 percent sort of mark. 10 and 90 seems fine. And then the colors here, I'm going to leave that green, but actually the color here I don't like. So I'm going to put a darker red and then the cell midpoint I'm going to use for the axes. So I'm going to hit OK through to all of that and apply. And you'll see now we have our variance to data bar and this will expand and contract with the pivot table. There's a couple of issues, really. The first one is it says variance two at the top, which is very annoying and we don't want that. Now we can change the name of that to sort of various spaces and stuff, but it also changes the name of it in the pivot table field settings, which is quite annoying and hard to know what you're doing with it. I find it better to just change the format of that cell. Control one or just any other way you like of getting to format cells. We'll go to custom format. I'm just going to change it to three semicolons, which in a nutshell means that for positive, negative and zero values and text just show nothing at all. Basically, we'll make it appear blank, even though it still says variance two in the cell, a much cleaner look of column. Essentially, we're going to do almost the same thing for the variance percentage, but we've got a major shortcut now because we've already set one up. So we'll go to variance percentage. We're going to drag that in again so that we get that duplicate column. But we now have a shortcut, which is that we can go into conditional formatting and manage rules and we can duplicate the rule that we previously created. Click on edit rule and instead of saying apply it to L8, we apply it to N8 in this case, i.e. the column we want. And it will automatically pick up that this is variance percent two. All the other settings have remained the same. We hit OK. Now we have that set up. And we just want to copy the format from there, which we can use the format painter if we like, to there. Now, if you're wondering whether they're going to lose all this on a refresh, we shouldn't do. As long as our pivot table options say preserve cell formatting on update here. Now what I'm going to do is add data bars to the subtotals as well, so that when we collapse the subtotals, we've got data bars on there. And I want them to be in relation to each other. Again, there's a shortcut 
Go to the home menu and conditional formatting and manage rules. For the variance, we're going to duplicate that one. And what we're going to do is instead of applying it there, I'm going to apply it to there. And you can see that name product category changed. So this is now only going to apply to the subtotals. And I'm going to make a slight change to it because I'm going to change the color. You can see I've already set up colors, but the way I did that was I went to more options and I just moved this slider down to a darker color. And you can see how much darker it's going to be than the original, just so that we can see the difference between the data bars on subtotals and the data bars on standard sort of data. So I'm actually going to just pick the one that I already created, which is this one here, and then do the, essentially the, exactly the same thing on the negative one as well to make it a much darker red. So I'm going to OK that and OK it again. And now you see we've got these darker data bars appearing on our variances for the subtotals. And if we sort of make everything smaller, like we're still getting data bars here, and then we can drill down on everything using expand collapse expand entire field. And now we'll do exactly the same thing on here. This time we can copy that one because we've changed the colors on it so it's easier. And we'll edit it. And instead of L24, we're just going to put it onto that one there, N12. As long as it's on a subtotal, it'll work. Apply that. And one minor thing is that we still have these grand totals appearing twice. So we can just apply the custom format that we created earlier onto that cell by going to custom formats and it'll always be at the very bottom or near the bottom if we created it recently. And we'll just apply that one there and that will make that disappear. Click on that F4 shortcut for repeat last action. And now those two have disappeared and we've got a much neater looking report. Now this has an added bonus as well, because you might have noticed when I refreshed the pivot table before the column widths changed. And the reason they changed is because it was matching exactly the width needed to cope with the numbers at the bottom. But now with no numbers showing at all and no headers, we can rearrange these to whatever size we want. And then when we hit refresh all or refresh, nothing changes. Those columns are retained, which is uh, an added bonus, basically, of removing all the numbers out of a column. I'm now going to add another data bar for the actuals. Again, if we click in here, bring up the field list, add in another column for total actuals, which I'm going to put next to the actuals. And this time, what I'm going to do is add a different color data bar just to show the magnitude of the actual sales. Again, add a data bar. And it doesn't matter which one you pick because it's going to change it anyway. Get that little icon. We say we want to apply to all of our subcategory again. And we'll manage that rule. And we're just going to change the color. And I'm going to change it to match the color of my overall report. So I'm just going to make it one of the grays, perhaps like something like that. I'm not going to put negative values on it, but I am going to tick this show data bar only and OK that. So now we have like a data bar showing the sales a bit like we did before. We just need to get rid of the grand total on that column. We'll give it the custom format of the three semicolons there for the subtotals. We might as well add a date bar on there. So if we go to manage data bars, make a duplicate of that one, edit that rule and this time point it at a subtotal, which we will do there. And we want it darker as well. But because we picked a theme color, we can just up it to a darker color within that theme and OK. it. This is essentially looking pretty good already. We have our drill down capability. We can see where the key issues are as well in terms of where the key variances and stuff are. As an added bonus, though, you can actually sort this data based off of like the highest variances stuff. So if we click, say, in a product subcategory and right click, you can see we have sort. If we say more sort options, you'll see that we can sort it by descending or ascending variance. And then you'll see that everything is showing up with the highest absolute variance first. You could equally have sorted it in terms of highest sales. We're now going to make this report super user friendly by adding some slices. We bring up the field list again, and this time we want to create a 
year slicer. So right click on year and hit add a slicer and also a month slicer. So these just allow us to filter the data instantly. And you can see it's retaining this sort order as well of lowest to highest variances, but it looks awful. So let's do something about that. Pick one of the slices, doesn't matter which one, and go to the slicer menu and pick a style that's similar that you like. And then by right clicking on that and hitting duplicate, we can create a custom slicer where we remove the border so that it just looks a bit more like the pivot table. So where it says whole slicer, hit format, go to border, hit none, hit OK. And what that's done is created a custom slicer. Now I've already had one, but you'll probably just have the one. You click on that and now we have our custom slicer with no border. And of course now the other one, we can click the same custom and we have two slicers now with no border. But they still don't look right. So what we just wanna do is change the number of columns. So let's make that one two columns and this one can make it 12, but let's just say six. And then we can move them around, adjust the size accordingly. But there's one more thing I want to do to these slicers because we, we're using them on a pivot table and that pivot table is changing size depending on what we pick. But what we want to do is make sure our slicers aren't sticking out the end of the pivot table. So we want our slicers to also change size. So if we go to the size and properties, one of the properties of the slicers is move and size with cells. So we want to pick that one, I think, when we're using a pivot table. So we do that. Same with this one, size and properties, move and size with cells. So now we just want to position them correctly. So if I hold down Alt as I move the slicers around, they will snap to the grid. I'm holding Alt down the whole time here. So I'm just moving things around as they snap, letting them snap to the grid. And then I'll do the same with the month one. And now we got a pretty darn good report, easy to use, easy to spot what we're doing, easy to expand and collapse. A couple of minor issues. One is we've got total actual two appearing, so we just need to remove that. So again, that's just about applying that custom format of the free semicolons, that's fine. But the much bigger issue is our months are being shown in alphabetical order. And I don't like that. It'd be far better that they were shown in chronological order. So we're going to sort that out next. So we're going to sort out the month display order so that it displays chronologically. And to do that, we need to go back into this data model. And one of the features that we got on the data model is if we click in a, in a column here, you can see that we have a sort by function. And we can say that we want to sort that column by another column. The problem we've got at the moment is that because we've got multiple years in here, we haven't really got a sensible second column to sort it by, because if we sort it by year month, it's still not going to be quite right. So we just need to create a new column first with the month number in, and then we'll be able to sort it by that number. So what we need to do is add a formula in a column that gives us essentially the month number. Luckily, we've got this year month column here, but we could do something in our raw data to generate like a month number or something like that if we wanted. But I'm going to do it in here just so you can see it's very similar to the way you would use Excel. So I'm going to use the write function, which also exists in Excel. And I'd say we want the year month column and we want the right two digits of that. OK, and hit enter and you'll get that calculation spilling all the way down. It's called itself calculated column, which I don't really like. So if we double click in that, we can call it anything. And I'm just going to call it month num like that. And then secondly, we're just going to hide that from client tools because we don't want that as an available field in the pivot table as far as I'm concerned. Now, when we click on month, we can use sort by function, sort by the column, and we can sort by this month number column and hit OK. And now, anytime we drag that month field into a pivot table, it will automatically sort it by the month number column. So you can see that automatically it's already sorted that slicer now in chronological order. So there we have our drill down capability, easy to spot key variances, easy to switch between months, and years. If you want a year to date, for example, you can hold down the shift key to highlight multiple items on the slicer. So there we go. We now have our year to date 
Very, very good report. Way, way better than the old school report. And think of the amount of effort that you'd have to go into every time you updated this at a period end. But in the next video, I've got something really special because I'm going to put in vertical data bar graphics. You can see trends of variances and also, of course, drill down from there and see detail below. So do not miss that. That's really something special. Make sure you download this spreadsheet. All the measures are in there. Everything's set up and ready to go so you can follow along to the video. Make sure that you've got things correct as well. So I'll see you in the next video shortly.